Good afternoon and welcome to A Taste for Truth. Today is our penultimate episode. And while time is running out for us, it's also running out for Julian. So we better rush on with a recap before we pick up where we left off with Julian in the embassy. I'll just share my screen. As we know, Julian, the award-winning journalist, whilst pursuing ordinary journalistic activities, exposed the American administration for committing and covering up war crimes, resulting in the Swedish authorities accusing him of sexual misconduct where, and he went to hide in the embassy so they wouldn't extradite him to Sweden where he thought they were gonna extradite him to America. And then the Swedish dropped all the charges. But Julian got put in Belmarsh anyway. Doesn't really make sense, does it? I, for one, am a bit confused because I thought that the Ecuadorian administration were on Julian's side and that they were standing up for his rights over the big, big British and the mean Americans. What happened? Let's investigate. But first, we'll do a little catch up on the journey to Belmarsh. Journey to Belmarsh, a tale of arbitrary detention Arbitrary detention is when you get put in prison without having done a crime or breaking a law. WikiLeaks released the mur collateral murder video. America are very upset. The Swedish accused Julian of sexual misconduct, oddly. Julian takes refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy and stays there for nine years, then the Swedish drop the charges, maybe it was seven years, I get the numbers wrong. Then America pay off the Ecuadorian premier and Julian is removed from the embassy. Well, maybe it wasn't a direct payoff, but the Ecuadorian administration had a sudden turnaround they were all very socialist and supporting Julian Assange and very upset about the way the British have treated the Ecuadorians. But then, all of a sudden, the socialists who gave up Julian Assange and renounced socialism. Eh? What happened? Lenin Moreno, unfortunate nomenclature there, he's called Lenin surprised the world by moving sharply away from his predecessor and the country's historic comrades. Hmm. I think that's him there. What happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. It would seem, and I'm not sure of the details of this, but you can do some fact checking. But Ecuador, a fairly dependent on support from the World Bank and the IMF and other money people that the Americans have a fair amount of control over. And all of a sudden, Ecuador joined in with the Americans and decided that they weren't going to be socialist anymore. And so, to support their new friends, the Americans, they gave Julian the order of the boot.
the Julian getting carried out of the embassy there. Not very kind, not very friendly. And he might have noticed that he had a beard. Doesn't normally sport a beard, Julian. And um, well, it would seem that prior to his getting removed from the embassy, um, his personal grooming equipment was confiscated. So he wasn't able to do his hair or shave um, because they wanted him to look a mess when he got dragged out of the embassy, which he did. And also they spread rumors about him doing dirty protests and misbehaving in the embassy. But that's easy enough to prove or disprove because he was under surveillance the whole time. And if there was footage of Julian Assange smearing poo on the embassy walls, I'm sure it would be out there because, well, as we know from the rape allegations, mud sticks. So poor old Julian got dragged out of the embassy and what happened to him next? He was sentenced to 50 weeks in prison for breaching bail. If you remember when he was running away from the rape allegations, which were subsequently dropped, he jumped bail. So he was sentenced to 50 weeks for jumping those bail conditions. And very, very unusually, Julian was sent to Belmarsh, a high security prison, to serve his bail jumping sentence. Julian served the 50 weeks without incident, I may have had. I think he may have had some health problems. And then he was again refused bail, despite the fact that the British courts said that he didn't need to be extradited and shouldn't be extradited to America. This, however, did not make the judge feel that he should be allowed out of solitary or out of a high security prison. Then, just as Julian feared all along, validating his extended hiding out in the embassy, a British court committing crimes against the American state. As you're aware, the crime that he committed was showing us all, the American authorities, avoiding taking responsibility for the fact that their soldiers had shot civilians on the ground. So here we are, Julian Assange is facing extradition to America. And today is the day that we are protesting to Pretty Pretty Patel about that fact, because there's a few things that need to be taken into consideration. Firstly, it needs to be considered that the UK-USA extradition treaty does not permit for extradition to be granted if the offence for which extradition is requested is a political offence. Well, that's all right then, because we know that this is a law abiding democracy. There's a convention against torture and other cruel and inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. It's internationally illegal. And we know that arbitrary and arrest, arbitrary arrest and detention are also illegal. You're not allowed to put someone in prison unless there's a good reason and they've broken the law. Well, Julian hasn't broken the law. He's been a good citizen. So he should 
be all right then, shouldn't he? As it turns out, he's not. The UN decided that Julian was being arbitrarily detained. They also decided that he is suffering psychological torture. Julian's mother explained to us his treatment. He's being held in the basement of the prison, right in the middle of the prison in solitary confinement. As a mother, I'm asking the world to stand up for my brave son. Assange denies the allegations of sexual misconduct in Sweden. It's not looking good for Julian. It's a dark day and time is running out. But before I leave you with today's truth task, I want to remind you that Julian is not all doom and gloom and that even at the darkest hours of his life, he's managed to have a sense of humour and a bit of optimism. So what I'm going to do today is share with you to lift your spirits and fuel your fervour is show you something, a little something that Julian made as promotional material while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy when he was read when he was running for the Senate in Australia. Not even better than I'd hoped. Oh. I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it? Bloody oh. Now you're ready to go hard at Australian politics. What message do you want to say to the populace? We have the chance to turn the pages over. We can write what we want to write. We gotta make things leak so we can get much older. We're all wired up now. We're all being fed lies. And there's Julian lightening things up a little so that we can stride out with a smile on our face. So it's time for the truth task. And here we have it. I'm reminding you about our little outing this afternoon. Tuesday the 17th of May, that's today. Protest to Preeti Patel at the Home Office. This post is at six o'clock. I know lots of people that are getting there earlier. I, for one, will be there all afternoon. And tomorrow, Hacking Justice, fantastic movie, is showing at the Curzon Cinema in the West End. So London people, We've got loads of live wires for you to plug into. So let me leave you hoping 
that your taste for truth is tingling and that you are packing your lunches and getting ready to fan, fan the fires of your freedom at the home office. And I'll see you for our final episode of Julian's Taste for Truth series tomorrow. And let's hope that Pretty Patel has saved Julian's life, followed the letter of the law, and upheld the great British democracy of which we are all so proud. And the most distinguished legal system in the world, which one ought to be able to depend upon to be truthful and just. Have a lovely day.